is an intermediary between the BSCI secretariat, members, suppliers, and the local organizations in China. In the past 20 years, Joyce has been working as a corporate communications practitioner for various organizations with a focus on sustainability, CSR, and supply chain management. Her major expertise is in public affairs, stakeholder and media relations, crisis and issue management. Prior to join BSCI, she was the senior vice president of the HSBC Corporate Sustainability Asia Pacific Region Office, Dell China's Corporate Communications Director, and she also worked for HKSAR Government Innovation and Technology Commission, HK Airport Authority, and GS1, a global supply chain standard organization. She has a master degree in communications, sorry, bachelor degrees in communications, and a master of art in translation. Her topic today is going to be about how CSR to help to develop sustainable supply chain. Let's welcome Joyce Chu. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lu's uh, kind introduction. The challenge of speaking in between um, the lunch and the morning session is uh, you're mentally already fed up uh, of listening, I believe, because all those, not because of those content are junk, they are too uh, much uh, nutrition that you need time to digest, but physically you're hungry. I know, you're hungry. So I try to make this aggressive, ambitious topic in a simple, direct, and straightforward manner so that you can digest and have some takeaway. I choose uh, English because I speak English faster than Mandarin. That's the only reason. Uh, so I'm, because uh, <coughs> my Mandarin will be slower than my English, so I will prefer to speak in English. This is a very aggressive topic and ambitious. I try to confine it in a 10 slides. Um, we have so many experts here. Uh, I try to make my presentation in a humble way. It's based on the feedback collected through our stakeholders, our members, and also the uh, working partners in China and different parts of the world. Emerging trends for CSR and sustainability. Be before Before I talk about this topic, I would like uh, to introduce briefly our organization. Foreign Trade Association, Ojo Dui Wai Mao Yi Xie Hui, is headquartered in Brussels. It has been formed for more than three decades. Uh, we used to focus on anti-dumping issues, free trade um, issues, uh, sustainable, sustainable trade uh, issues. Since year 2003, based on the needs of our stakeholders and members in Europe, we founded, uh, we launched this initiative called Bis Business Social Compliance Initiative, BSCI. Uh, in Chinese, it's called Shangjie uh, Shihui Changyi. BSCI itself, uh, we have united over 1,300 1, member companies. There are many brands, retailers, and buyers based in Europe, but uh, now become a global organization. We have lots of members also based in other parts of the world, including China. Our vision is a world of free trade and sustainable global supply chain. Uh, based on the same code of conduct uh, in social responsibility, uh, we try to uh, work together with uh, supply chain partners, especially producers based in sourcing countries like China. Out of over 600 billion, billion, billion sales volume of the products we, uh, we sold through our over 1,000 members, 70% of them are purchased in China. Followed by Bangladesh, we have uh, around 10%, uh, and then Turkey and uh, India. 
So you can see how important China is to our supply chain and also our, our members when they try to pursue uh, social performance in the best way. Challenges. Before I talk about challenges, I just want to supplement um, about our definition and understanding of CSR and sustainability. Because many of the time people mix up two and uh, try to make it, and some people interpret it, uh, they are the same, but actually there's a little bit different. Um, many people have already talked about CSR, I don't need to add that. I just try, try to make it simple. Imagine you are taking a flight, uh, usually before uh, the flight take off, we have uh, this um, announcement. Uh, when accident occur, we have the mask dropping down. Who should be the first one wearing the mask? Yourself, right? So be responsible before you help others. Same thing, same three apply in the global trade supply chain management. Uh, we have to look after ourselves first. How can we manage our expectation of the workers? Do we treat them well, fairly? And this is the understanding of CSR. Putting corporate in front of social responsibility uh, make it more difficult because, because uh, it is uh, not just yourself. We have partners. Sustainability, based on, there are many different, I try to use this maybe better because I'm a, I'm allergic to flowers. If I cough, don't worry, it's not Ebola. It's just allergic uh, to air quality and flowers. Um, so, sustainability. We have many different uh, definitions. Uh, but uh, today I adopted uh, the most commonly acceptable one. Uh, back to uh, 1987, uh, it's uh, promoted by UN, defined. Development, sustainable development refer to development uh, that, meet, that can meet um, the needs of the present without compromising the ability to meet uh, the others. That leads to the first challenge I want to mention, is the high expectation of multi-stakeholders. We have many listed companies here today. We have many well-established organizations, uh, professors. We have NGOs like Greenpeace. Uh, you know lots of stakeholders' definition already, but quite often we tend to forget one. We see them every day, everywhere. They are not present here today, but I'm glad you see here. This little prince is a child, children. Children's rights tend to be forgotten uh, in our day-to-day -day business. Many people forget how to protect them. People thought only the safe the children or UNICEF should do things about, or the charity organization, but actually it should be embedded in our CSR and sustainable, uh, sustainability policy uh, strategy. Why? Refer back to the definition I just mentioned, sustainability, sustainable development uh, that uh, has future, requires us to take care of the impact on the, our ability to manage the expectation of our future generation. So here, among all those expectations of uh, the multi-stakeholders, I just want to highlight one trend. A growing trend uh, is championed by UNICEF, glo uh, glo uh, the UN Global Compact, and uh, Save the Children back to year 2012. In March, they launched this children's rights and business principle. How many of you have heard of these principles? Thank you. And how many of you have signed this principle? Not yet. But I believe Liang Xiaohui, oh, he disappeared. Uh, CNTAC was, uh, <coughs> was with me when we launched the children's uh, rights and business principle in uh, Beijing back to year 2012 in May. The tenth principle I would like to share with you here briefly. If you haven't heard of that, please go back and look into that and try to embed those principles in your day-to-day -day business, regardless whether you are an NGO organization uh, in profit-making or non-profit-making. Uh, we believe, uh, 
according to the Prince BSEI also, also has uh, competed, committed uh, to, uh, to comply to the principles uh, of when we promote our membership uh, service and, and implement the social compliance initiative. Uh, the basic very core principle is uh, uh, children's rights integration into uh, the policies commitment and also to identify areas for improvement through due diligence and we have to uh, set up some rem remediations, uh, policy and procedures to tackle problems when we need uh, ongoing and continuous improvement. So the second uh, uh, and the next few uh, principles, they have altogether ten. Uh, three of them are addressing the workplace challenges. So many people talk about child labor, uh, zero tolerance, that's for sure. But many companies tend to forget uh, how to protect the children's rights through taking care of the parents, workers, the caregivers. Do we provide decent working hours and decent working environment to those working parents? Uh, can, if we can help, and for sure they can protect the children's better. And the next few principles too is focusing on how to protect our children's rights through delivering products and services in a socially responsible way. Our advertising and also marketing camp program have we uh, embedded the respect to children. Many people thought, uh, yes, we have focus enough because we are always emphasize about the quality and the safety that products we provide for children. Not only that. Back to two years ago when I was speaking at the panel, I quote this example. How often do you see the restaurants have uh, the toilets provided for children, for the mother? Eating is equally important when we go to put out our waste. So going to the toilet, the comfortability, for all ages is also very important. Not until we can find every single five-star hotel of these facilities, we still find children's rights are still being neglected. That's my personal opinion. This is uh, a bit tough, but that's something we should address uh, in our day-to-day -day business also. So the last of the group of the principles focusing on community and involvement. Um, when we purchase land, if you're a land developer, property developer, have you thought about the space that we should be taking care of when, when we have children uh, living in the district or community? In Hong Kong, the government promotes every day uh, each ch child should deserve have one hour free games time. And uh, this is, well, well, we offer the time, we promote that, but do we have the space? So this is something we should take uh, consideration to that. So this is the expectation in the global trend uh, about social responsibility. It's not limited anymore just to investors or uh, say uh, producers, consumers, not only that. Think about children next time when you set up your policy. Hidden risk in globalized supply chain. Uh, we have been hearing a lot. Many businesses are growing, moving out from China because of the cost. We have seen there are lots of activities going on in Bangladesh, Cambodia, Myanmar, and two weeks, uh, I think uh, in August, I was at the Global uh, Footwear uh, Su Sustainability Summit. We have seen lots of enterprises are talking about, um, say, moving uh, to Africa, footwear factories. There are so many things they are now facing, all those social, economic, and infrastructural challenges, environmental protection problems. We have been suffering. We have this painful uh, journey, and it's ongoing. And uh, there are lots of hidden risks created throughout this transition of economies process that we should take uh, a consideration of. And uh, so when you define your target sourcing country, Next time, think about those experiences you have learned. Don't repeat that. Don't repeat that in other countries. The third challenge is strengthening government legal requirement. I don't have to talk about it in very much details because China is one of the champions is in enhancing all the legal framework for, uh, say, uh, um, how to groom, uh, nurture uh, the company's ability 
uh, our competence uh, to comply to global standards in terms of CSR and sustainability. We have target to meet, I just quote one example because BSEI is from Europe and uh, in April this year you have uh, learned the uh, European Parliament has uh, already adopted a directives applicable to companies regardless listed or non-listed. As long as they have over 500 staff, they have to comply to disclose non-financial information and uh, about their performance in, anti in fighting uh, bribery, corruption, uh, how do they deal with uh, workers' benefits and protection, and labor rights, human rights issues within their business. So in the past, for example, like France, uh, since last year they introduced a new law talking about uh, companies are not uh, only listed one. Uh, the main uh, target is the listed companies. In the past, they are dis required to disclose the information about their sustainability performance um, within the country only. But think about the current uh, global supply chain is all connected. So the sustainability performance even is a very perfect good shape. It doesn't mean they are doing the good job in other countries, not necessary. So all these things are happening and that drives more collaboration and partnership with, uh, along the global supply chain. That I will touch, uh, uh, have a light touch later on about some examples happening. Duplication of efforts and resources managing risk. Auditing has been, I know today we have some auditing companies here. They are our partners to Ryland. And uh, we have 20 global co uh, auditing companies helping us to do audits all over the world. Each year we have over 9,000 audits uh, conducted in, all over the world. And over 6,000 of them, um, over 6,000 of them, those audits are conducted in China. Uh, there are lots of duplication of efforts. So we, we need time to communicate. Globally, we have this uh, Global Social Compliance Program, GSCP. If you search, you will find this platform. Brands and multiple standards, including BSCIs, are working together to eliminate the duplication of auditing efforts. Trying to align those code, uh, coding, uh, we have this code, audit code uh, equivalence process. Uh, try to align different requirements, not to give too much hustle and uh, make uh, the producers less fatigue because of many uh, audits uh, in social uh, responsibility. Merchandising versus CSR policy. There are many, you will be amazed or surprised. Uh, there, we have been talking about CSR so many years, but quite often CSR is still out of the boardroom agenda. CSR is still an isolated functional department and the buyers totally naive or totally ignore those things are related to their day-to-day -day, um, uh, responsibility. So this is totally alien to them. So this creates a lot of challenges when they try to implement. Uh, we have uh, seen producers try very hard to comply all uh, uh, CSR requirements uh, driven by the buyers, but the last very last minute, after they have months of improvement, they drop and terminate their contract or uh, cut the order because of the cost. So this is uh, another challenge we are facing. Why should cycle of impulsive uh, consum consumption and excessive supply? I just try to echo what we have a few speakers talking about this morning already. Um, do we need so many products? Uh, 80 20 rule, simple. 20% oh, all of the <coughs> products you have seen in supermarket or retailers are not sellable. Nobody touched them. And only 20% are very uh, welcome, uh, um, uh, are the best sellers. Producing junk products also require efforts and resources. So this virus cycle has uh, created lots of uh, pressure to companies and enterprises. So this is another thing we have to rethink, our consumer behavior. We have one of the speakers talk about this. Uh, why makes it so complicated? We ourselves are also consumers. So next time when we talk about consumer behavior, think about ourselves first. Do we need so many pairs of shoes? Do we need so many different color of t-shirts?
having said that, we do have uh, lots of different opportunities generated through these challenges. I'll take a few examples here. Multi-stakeholder dialogues and engagement. Uh, in the past few decades, we have, say, SAI developed in the New York, REP, uh, uh, REP is another uh, auditing uh, programs uh, happening. Uh, they have uh, delivered auditing programs all over the world. We have SEDEX developed from UK, we have BSCI based in Europe, and we have China National Test Town and the Parent Council, Dr. Lang Xiaohui's organization, CNTAC in China. We have different standards, but 99.9% of .9 things we are trying to measure are similar and the same and overlapping. So we developed this platform to work together to address issues. So these are the opportunities. If you want to know more about this multi-stakeholder advisory committee, uh, work, uh, please feel free to contact me. Transparency through communications. Today's this platform is a very good way to make ourselves transparent, our works, and, uh, and uh, we encourage partners like producers and, and, and buyers. Uh, they can work together, uh, share those information honestly so that they can address excessive working hours, uh, address those, um, say, uh, minimum wages issues together. Bridging the gaps of CSR and sustainability standards and systems. I called the example GSCP earlier. That's one of the best things we have been doing. It's a long journey. It's not easy. From one to one to many to many partnership. In the past, we have seen brands like uh, earlier. We have heard uh, Basifu has been one of the best uh, leader uh, uh, in driving CSR. So we encourage crossover. We encourage multiple parties working with multiple parties. Embed CSR and sustainability and overall business strategies. As I said, like the children's rights protection, please add them together in your overall strategy. Don't treat it like isolated, uh, only charity. We, we focus on donation to education to help children. Not only like that, it must be considered in your day-to-day -day business decision. Consumer awareness and scientific supply chain management we need rational calculation and assessment. Many people think about costs only. That's why they move out from China to other places. But actually setting up a new buying office can be a lot of costs, lots of hidden agenda and hidden costs behind the scene. And so we need more professional bodies to look into the, this uh, area. And maybe Accenture uh, can be one of those because uh, you have been doing very well in the circular economy uh, model. Just take a, an example of best practices. How can we address the problem? Um, for example, like BSCR, we believe uh, a common code of conduct. We don't need to repeat uh, different efforts. Um, we can share resources in managing through auditing uh, methodologies. We can empower through training and engage our stakeholders together to address the problem. Here is just a quick glance of the code of conduct I have been talking about. So late, later this year, we will. Uh, this new code of conduct has been launched uh, earlier this year, and uh, later this year we will uh, be launching a pilot in China. We will invite some factories who have workers relations problem, who have complaints or protests, and how can they uh, uh, resolve those problems? So we invite factories to work together invite some professional consultants to help them set up some role model. So with those as setting up, and we can certainly address the CSR issues better, we believe. Uh, this is just a repeat of all those best practices, the three pillars we base on, and we are happy to share with you our experience offline. In, tr in the interest of time, I won't go through each uh, one of them here in details. But one thing I want to... Um, uh, share is uh, uh, through the common uh, sharing of the audit reports uh, among over 1,000 members in the past decade we have successfully saved over 60 uh, million US dollars because we avoid duplication of auditing efforts. Um, here are some uh, three good examples. When we talk about innovative partnership, I talk about from one to one to many to many. This is one way of innovation. And the other is uh, we don't need have to talk about loss of investment when we partner with uh, supply chain uh, players to resolve problem. Quite often, one of the most commonly uh, 
uh, the biggest challenge is excessive working hours. We have this Dutch buyer, we have a friend sitting next to me also from Holland, and they have been helping uh, the family, uh, the, the, the family run factory uh, by sending the teams, uh, the engineers, to uh, look into the production process for one week. And uh, they address all those issues by rearranging the workflow, and they successfully uh, eliminate all those unnecessary working hours within 12 months with higher productivity. So when we talk about partnership between buyers and uh, producers, it doesn't have to, talk, have to be related to money, financial only, but expertise, knowledge, transfer, and sharing. The second example is similar, but the area's focus is human resources. We have this Hubei uh, crayfish supplier, and uh, they have been um, facing lots of different non-compliance issues, like health and safety, a uh, high uh, turnover rate of uh, uh, workers because it's a seasonal business. Um, so our Swedish buyer sent their team to set up the HR system with them together with staff in two weeks' time. And within one year, they successfully improved the turnover rate of staff. Uh, the third one is uh, earlier this year in Guangdong, we completed a collaboration project with ILO, International Labour Organization. Uh, by sending some consultants endorsed by ILO, we successfully increased the competence of the workers. Uh, they just rearranged their workflow without investment of any additional tools or equipment. They triple their output, the productivity. So all these uh, partnerships I would like to encourage business should consider. Partnership doesn't have to uh, mean lots of investment or, uh, say, compromising of course expertise sharing is the best way to collaborate together. This is the last slide I want to share with you. It's about the cooperative approach. What BSCI try to uh, promote is cascade effect. What does it mean? It means when you are on your own doing business, don't just focus on your customers or buyers or consumers. Think about your upstream supply chain partners, your downstream uh, customers. Think about across the supply chain, other stakeholders. Get them engaged in the process. Put heads together, and we believe we can create a cascading effect. Last but not least, I just try to conclude my presentation so briefly and shortly. Um, the world looks uh, complicated and lots of complexity, but back to basic, is simple. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. That's the famous quote I often remind myself when I talk to stakeholders. Um, don't make it complicated. Back to basic. Think about our needs. Think about our, our children and the next generation. We will know what's the best decision to make. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Joyce. Please stay with me for a moment uh, if questions come up from the floor. Thanks to Joyce, Joyce has given us a brief overview from a global perspective in supply chain, how should CSR be implemented and what are the challenges and opportunities. And she has also talked about in Asia, in China, Thailand, and some interesting case studies that we can learn from. And she has also given us some things that we need to pay attention to during CSR implementation, especially for system building, policy making. So let's give Joyce another round of applause for, his, for her wonderful presentation. So we have about five minutes open to the floor for questions related with supply chain. Okay. Greenpeace. Uh, thank you, Joyce. Uh, Joyce, I'm, I was, I'm very curious about um, um, your experience. Uh, I was reading your background and your experience working at HSBC. Uh, in the corporate social responsibility, and I'm, because I, I actually used to work in Citibank, so I, I was I'm wondering some of the challenges you face. 
I'm, I'm curious about now, post-financial crisis, a lot of the banks, investors actually have very, have faced a lot of, um, I would say, bad press and a lot of um, uh, bad will towards the financial sector. And I wonder, what was your experience in HSBC uh, trying to address those uh, challenges? And um, how did you, uh, how, how was CSR part of that process? Thank you for asking. My uh, experience at HSBC, two things, two good examples I can share with you here. Uh, the first one is internal. HSBC is huge. All over the world we have uh, 300,000 staff uh, located in different countries. And uh, what we have been doing by that time when I was there, we uh, uh, support a global organization like Climate Change. So uh, we don't teach staff how to make decisions. We collaborate with the professionals. I was one of those. We stayed one week in the mountain in Zhejiang, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, in the, one of the uh, five uh, global climate center. So we follow the professors every day, the director, vice president. We all work together, just follow the uh, professors teach us how to do it, collect the debris, and how to measure the damage of the climate, the, the impact created by the, uh, the change of the weather, and just record some figures. And at the end of that two weeks' time, sometimes one week, we get together in the room, and then the takeaway is, OK, what's, what should I do in the bank? How can I contribute to the world to protect our environment? That trigger one of the major initiative within the bank globally because our global procurement director, he is a guy from California. He used to have three cars, three houses, and then he sold all of them because he said, I don't need so much, just one person. And then he initiated this uh, energy saving initiative by just um, mandate all the staff before they leave the office all over the world. Imagine 300,000 300, staff and we succeeded in saving millions of dollars, and uh, it helps. And externally, uh, one of uh, the good initiatives we have is the, the Green Loan Program. Talking about business, we, uh, uh, we collaborate with Hong Kong Productivity Council. Because bank itself, all we have is money. Of course, talents, but we don't have all those industrial knowledge. And when we make loans to those SMEs in Guangdong area, for example, they want to purchase green technologies. How can I make sure those are really green technologies? How can I create impact indirectly by giving out the money? That green loan, we uh, get the professional to endorse the purchase what are the green technologies, the real one, and then we make a very good program to uh, 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 making loans to those SME and create impact indirectly so that we can measure after giving out, say, the loans of millions and how can we measure our performance. That was a good example we have shared. Um, another question. Oh. Anything about BSCI because I'm carrying that capacity today. <laughs> Hello, Joyce. In your presentation, you have mentioned that about negotiations sustained by multi stakeholders. So I want to ask whether there are any specific measures that we can see results in the next three years. Actually, for different organizations, you have different format of reports. How do we balance? The differences. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm from SGS, third party. So you will quickly receive our invitation. Uh, we don't have ICTI. So for CSR, ag agriculture in the Netherlands, and in US, we work together with a I saw 8,000 starting from 2012 uh, February. So we had six meetings in different cities, in, normally in factories. So normally it's just uh, pre presentation in five star hotels. But the topics are very dirty about things happening within the factories. 
So about some of the challenges like insurance, social insurance, environmental insurance, environmental protection. How do we have any good practices with clean manufacturing? And there was one time in Shenzhen we had also a meeting. Actually, all this information are open to the public on our website. But for the meeting, it is、uh, closed doors because we are afraid of promotion pressure. We'll always have representatives from the labor unions and also from government brands. So next time we're going going to talk about enhancing competence in social. Responsibility. So we are going to talk about future projects that we are going to launch to help Chinese stakeholders to improve our performance. Okay, let's put our hands together for Joyce once again.